Hello everybody, Luke Shoulder. I'm a Field of Grounds for Bex Hybrids. Today is April 27th, uh, and we're looking at how does tillage practices impact the ability of our soils to accept water. So many of us are, are looking at a forecast in the coming days where rain is uh, potentially uh, gonna be heavy uh, with thunderstorms. So how do different tillage practices or lack thereof on the right is no-till, how does that impact the ability if we get a large rain event for that, that water to soak in and then get beyond and, and not remain as persistently around that young seedling if we've got some acres in the ground. So on the right is no-till. This ground hasn't been disturbed in terms of tillage since May of 2020. On the left is a stale seedbed situation. So in March, uh, this customer ran a, a case disc ripper uh, when it was very dry, uh, ripped this ground. And then the week after Easter, it was also very dry and he ran a, a light, a tillage pass with a Danish tine field cultivator. Nothing has been done since. So the premise behind this little demonstration is to mimic what an inch of rainfall in this situation, a pretty quick or abrupt inch of rainfall looks like in terms of a no-till or a stale seabed situation. So this is a six inch cylinder. As I dump the water in, you can see in the no-till situation, uh, it's sinking in or soaking in, I should say. Um, but it's a obviously mimicking a very quick uh, rainfall event, an inch of rain that uh, you would come very quickly like in a thunderstorm. So you can see the water soaking in at a fairly quick pace. Now I pre-treated or pre-hydrated this soil. I soaked it last evening to try to mimic uh, a soil that is more uh, common with when we receive some rains because we had been very, very dry prior to now. Now I'm in a stale seabed situation. So as I dump in this inch of rain, a water bottle it's a little over 450 milliliters um, as I dump in this water as you can see it is soaking in you can see that by the air bubbles but it's at a slower rate and you can actually see some sediment some of that's residue but you can see some sediment that's uh, floating around there and this mimics what often occurs in a tillage situation versus no-till now no tillage is very necessary for a lot of reasons whether it be you know leveling ground or, or, or weed control. But as I move over to the no-till situation, you can see all that water is actually soaked in. Now I did start that earlier, but it's all soaked in. What occurs when we till the ground, in, and in many cases, like I said, it's very necessary, that disrupts what mother nature has done for us. In this no-till situation, where the water soaked in rather quickly, over the course of the last several months, last fall and even this spring, we've had what we call soil aggregate stability that's been and been built upon by the soil microorganism population. They binded a lot of the soil particles together, allowing that water to soak in at a much quicker rate. Versus over here, when we disrupted that soil and that microbial environment, we not only disrupted those living organisms, but we also broke apart a lot of that soil aggregate stability. As you can see, there's a fair amount of sediment on the soil surface. That's what oftentimes leads to crusting and the inability for our soils to dry out at a, at a uniform rate. But also because of those tillage passes, oftentimes the soil surface can remain persistently wet a little longer. So just some things to keep in mind in the coming weeks. Now, many of you may be asking, what do I do with this information? How does this impact decisions you may consider uh, for the next week, even the coming weeks with acres that are either unplanted or already in the ground? So first of all, those acres that are planted, keep an eye, a little closer eye on those acres that uh, perhaps receive some tillage because those are more likely to crust because of that sediment that you see that's built up in this stale seabed situation. They're a little more likely to remain persistently wet near the soil surface too at times. Um, which can lead to more seedling diseases, which I'll have a picture here in this video. And then the second thing, as you think about what, how does this impact your decisions for the coming weeks, maybe even the coming days, is undoubtedly some of you are going to have a fair amount of acres that either you choose not to plant prior to this rain of Wednesday, Thursday, or, uh, or you just can't get to. And how do you treat those acres? If we till those acres, that is gonna to lead to more of what you see in this situation. And in all likelihood, you'll see a little more crusting or a little more of a seal that's glazed over some of the acres. They probably aren't gonna take the water quite as quickly as if they're left undisturbed. So that may be worth considering as I'm sure many of you wanna get in those, back into those fields as quickly as possible. As always, call with questions. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.